In the heart of Bathurst Town Square, and adjacent to King's Parade, lies the Bathurst War Memorial Carillon. Towards the end of 2019, an important happening was scheduled to occur there. Filmmaker Bruce Ryan and myself, John Telfer, a photo historian, decided to compile a film to record and preserve a significant event in the Carillon's history. The Carillon is currently undergoing refurbishment, with the upgrading of the bells in the top section of the tower to make it a full Carillon. Completed in 1933, this impressive structure had 35 bells initially and could play melodies and chime the time. However, it didn't qualify as a full carillon, since it was not fitted with a clavier. This is a keyboard designed through mechanical linkages to strike the interior of the bells with a clapper. For safety purposes, the area has been cordoned off. This makes it quite challenging and time consuming to film properly. Early in the new millennium, a 75th anniversary for the Carillon was celebrated and a committee promoting the significance of the Carillon and its need for refurbishment reactivated. Remembers also recorded this event and it is already available for viewing on YouTube. Since the Bathurst Bicentenary in 2015, the Bells Committee has actively worked on researching what was needed to make it a proper carillon. This was done in cooperation with Taylor's Foundry in England, which has cast the original bells. Across from the Carillion is the All Saints Cathedral Tower, built about 12 years ago. It contains a full set of bells for manual rope pulling operation by bell ringers. On the top of the tower, we have mounted a GoPro camera to record this carillon event. The construction crew are now setting up for the installation process and the dogmen are in the cage ready to work on the structural supports and the bells including new additions. Lots of coordination is now occurring with some amazing equipment in use. Considering the full height of the cranes it's amazing they can support such heavy loads. It's all delicately balanced on the specially designed mobile vehicle. During 2019, Remembers recorded the event using three cameras and including a drone for a bird's eye view. This material was released by Remembers to the local TV station, which gives an excellent condensed version news clip on what was happening. This is Prime 7 Local News with Carl Linders and Liz Wynn. And an important addition to an iconic landmark in Bathurst. Stay with us. For the first time in 85 years, the bells inside Bathurst Carillon have been upgraded. The existing top octave of the bells is being replaced and another higher octave is being installed. But this is only stage one. Further work is still needed to fully restore the Carillon. You'll be able to hear it soon. It's all blocked off at the moment. And of course, uh, people in Bathurst are working towards the inclusion of a clavier as well, which makes it a proper career. And so watch the space for that one. It's one of just three in Australia and Bathurst locals are looking forward to hearing the instrument once it's finally complete. The project is expected to be finished by mid 2019. I have with me uh, Richard Steele, who uh, knows about this project. Um, could you tell us about what's going on, Richard? Yes, I'm one of the uh, four trustees of the Bathurst War Memorial Carillion Trust, and um, our idea is to 
uh, arrange for the Carillion to be completed in accordance with the original plans which were made back in the mid-1920s. Uh, unfortunately, the Carillion wasn't completed fully when it was opened in 1933 because of the fact that uh, people ran out of money. Right. People of Bathurst were very uh, generous in donating money for bricks and they had lots of um, uh, activities where they raised money. They weren't allowed, uh, able to raise enough money though to complete the project which um, was deficient uh, a set of bells and also a clavier to play those bells. So we've got together a group um, which started about or 15 years ago uh, to raise money. Um, we had a bit of a, a hiccup along the way and so we stopped when we had about $230,000 in the bank. Uh, we needed a total at that stage of about 500000 but now some years later uh, we need a total of about 750000 and we've begun um, fundraising and the uh, state government has been very generous in giving us $300,000 towards our project. We're still about $150,000 to go, but today is the day when we're getting the bills that have been provided to replace the old bills which were recast due to the fact that they were um, not as well cast in those old days. They've got more uh, ability these days right. to cast uh, more efficient bills and better sounding bills. So we've got 12 going up today in a new frame uh, to replace 12 that are being taken out today. And then on Friday, hopefully, the other 12 bells will arrive from John Taylor & Co. in England, uh, who made the original bells back in 1930s and are now making our replacement bells and our new 12 bells. Uh, and they'll go in on after Friday. We have a representative from Taylor's here, the bell hanger, uh, Andrew Mills, who'll be installing those bells over the next couple of weeks. He's due to leave here on the 5th of December and he has a tight timetable so we have to get them completed so hopefully after the 5th of December the bells will start ringing again uh, as we should have known them back in the 30s. Oh, such a wonderful project and such a lot is involved isn't it going oh, yes. right back to the foundry again yes. where the originals were cast. Yes indeed they're still there not the same people of course right. but um, uh, they've been very good very helpful and uh, we're looking forward to this project being completed as it should have been those many years ago. And it's it's fascinating the, with the new bells uh, and the old, uh, a clavier will be installed um, to play them. Could you tell me a little bit about the difference to what yes. is there now? Yes, at the moment there's an electronic keyboard which plays the bells and is a little bit limited in its repertoire, uh, not only because of the electronic keyboard but because of the number of bells that are there and the quality of bells that are there. Uh, the new clavier will be uh, hopefully uh, installed by the end of June next year. At this stage we weren't able to um, get tailors to manufacture the clavier in time to put it all in at the same time as the bells uh, but that will go in by June next year but in the meantime we will have some electronics, some um, replacement electronics and a um, uh, which will enable the bells to be played but not as they should be as a proper um, uh, carillion right. um, until the, the new clavier goes in. The new clavier is, is like a keyboard except it's uh, a number of timber battens which are thumped with the fists oh, and goodness. that mechanically then by wires controls the hammers which then strike the bells. Right. Uh, and hopefully the, the, the right ones are pressed so that indeed we can get a, a good tune out of it. Isn't that amazing? So it was uh, manpower that powered the uh, clavicle, was it? There was no ele electric power involved uh, in the days of the clav clavier. Uh, that, that's correct. When it first went in it was um, some sort of, I don't pretend to understand the Oh, right. uh, control, yeah. Yeah. which again ran by wires, right. uh, but it was um, not as efficient as, uh, as yeah. the new system will be when it comes in. Right, and these new bells, they take it up an octave, do they? Indeed, yeah. yes. At the moment there are three octaves, and it's the top or the third octave which is coming out uh, and being replaced, and then by the end of next week hopefully we will have the new fourth octave come in. Mm. They are smaller bells up the top, and uh, they will therefore give the music a better range. Right.
wonderful and the bells themselves I noticed uh, John had taken some photos a few days ago they have names on them they do indeed yes the villages that um, uh, provided funding for the bells when they originally went in uh, not uh, necessarily completely paid for them but indeed contributed towards them with fundraising activities uh, all had their names uh, cast in the bells and the bells that are being replaced there uh, did have names on them so we've recast them with those with those names on them. Additionally there were three bells which were unnamed which are now being named to um, fix up an anomaly that uh, that didn't happen obviously back in the 30s when those bells weren't named. So we've got a, a new Bathurst bell, um, a Black Springs bell and a Hill End and Tamburura bell. So that's the three that weren't named previously that will now be named. Oh, you've given us an excellent rundown uh, Richard. We can now understand something of what's going on in the background and it's uh, it's not a simple job is it? It requires big machinery and a lot of skill and knowledge. Absolutely and we've been very fortunate in having some local people who are involved in the activity. We've got Tablelands Buildings who uh, have Tablelands Building who have um, uh, agreed to voluntarily provide their time and their men to uh, supervise the uh, project management of this uh, event and also we've got um, Ian Reeks, ICR Engineering from Blaney who has manufactured the new cradle to support the new bells which will go in um, and uh, of course the local council has been very generous in their time uh, and providing staff and the use of the facilities in their workshop to um, get this show on the road. Mm. So we hope to record the various stages and then what a wonderful occasion it will be when the clavier is playing with the uh, new bells. That, that will be something Indeed. for Bathurst. Indeed. We'll, um, uh, we'll hopefully have that up and running after June next year and then we'll be able to acclaim this as a, um, uh, a world activity. People yeah. will come here and uh, be able to see it internationally and we're hoping that uh, Carillion Ers will come from all over the world to play it because it's only one of um, a few in Australia and indeed there will be a circuit we hope between Sydney University, um, Canberra and Bathurst so that people can use that as a, a tour and it will attract visitors to Bathurst and uh, tourists uh, that will help with the economy locally obviously. You've been so thorough and I thank you so much Richard and congratulations to you and your committees. You're doing a marvellous job here in something that's going to last for many years or centuries or more and we're so glad we were asked to record the event. Thank you Richard. Thank you. I wouldn't like to be <laughs> up there. I <laughs> have to have a a good balance and no fear of heights. <laughs> so they're sort of just canvassing the roof for what has to be done I suppose, first of all. Um, I believe this crowd has been up there previously right. uh, on an occasion when they were doing some maintenance and they have had experience of taking the roof off right. and doing some work up there. So, uh, And they've been up inside spending a bit of time. Yes. Uh, reconnoitering the whole thing. The second crane has now arrived and uh, it will be this crane I think it will lift the roof off while the dog men above do any adjustments needed to free the old roof. These historical photos are from Taylor's Foundry in England. Two films at the end of the credits tell you more about the foundry and the bells. Whilst we're in the King's Parade, another crane has come along. But this one is not working on the Caribbean, it's working on the Christmas decorations in front of the Civic Centre or Council Chambers 
putting up the uh, Christmas star. So it's all happening in regards to cranes and um, decorations and bells. Here we come. The uh, Hey Peter! Hey Peter! Peter here, Lawrence! Here we are with the roof What's section doing with coming that, up. Mate? What are you doing? Yeah. So you have, you go across, don't go inside the fence, so you can see what they're doing. Tim lives the next thing we come up. John, uh, you've been helping me no end with the filming and all the last few weeks. This one is a is a big one that stretches over quite a period of time, doesn't it? it? Certainly does, and it's right in the swing of things at the moment. You can probably see behind me the two cranes. Um, they've already pulled the hail and the bird netting off, so the next step is the tin roof that'll come out, and hopefully they'll be ready to put the safe working platform back up there and, and bolt it on. But it's certainly very busy here at the moment. It certainly is. So that behind you is just uh, to stop the birds getting in. Yes, I think that's the initial protection to stop the birds getting into that area where yes. the bells are and also to stop the hail from denting the roof and maybe damaging the colour bond roof on top. Yes, and John, um, you've come up with some very good ideas of camera placement. Can you, can you tell me what you've done in that regard for this shot? Well, hopefully we'll be lucky enough. We've got a GoPro up in the bell tower. Um, hopefully that'll film the, the two tiers of the bells that are actually going out and the new bells coming in. We've also got one to the left of me here um, on the church, which is pointing back towards the Carillion. We've also got a couple um, of people roaming around the bottom around the Carillion taking stills and sort of, um, film footage. And we're lucky enough to have a drone today to be able to give us some of that um, exceptional footage as well. Wonderful, it's all happening. It certainly is, yes. Wished I had that team always, wouldn't it be great? It would. <laughs> Wished very, I had very some nice. of that new equipment that Troy has. It's beautiful. Yes, but we certainly know who to hit now. Andrew G and Paul Tool will certainly yes. help us out. Hopefully. Yes. Very good. Uh, thank you, John. Thank you. The dogmen go up again for another session on fitting a platform which John told us about, that'll be taken up by the other crane. There's a new roof section or work platform which will be a permanent uh, piece of the new equipment. And then after that's installed, the uh, New bells will be placed in position. I think that's the way it goes. Once again, the dogman on the second crane guiding the, uh, the crane driver to place the work platform on top of quite a delicate manoeuvre. positioning of the two cranes and 
the work platform is fitted in place. We thought it might go on the outside, but it, it fitting is within the brickwork. So I would hope that the bolts and so on that fit it in match up. And some interesting onlookers um, from the various uh, groups in town and also Troy with his wonderful camera and drone who's been doing some excellent filming for us. So Troy you've been doing some wonderful work with the drone today. Mate, yeah, I've been uh, trying to get a bit of different uh, different angle. Yeah, certainly it's so, beautiful uh, work. Uh, and you can uh, use the radio link to fire it back to your van, can you? Or um, yeah, 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 yeah. And the phone, so you've got some yeah, of the I'm latest sure gear. I can actually go live to television if yeah, I want. Yeah, so. isn't that great? No, a great credit to you that. Uh, You've uh, forged ahead so much in the west. I've never seen anyone carrying it right through to that stage. Good yeah. on you, yeah, Troy. Yeah. You're not used to being interviewed, are you? You're used to giving the interviews. Yeah, yeah no, I, yeah. <laughs> Isn't it uh, fascinating well, seeing uh, what's going on here? Bruce, it's highly exciting. It's yes. something we've anticipated for so long. Yes. And we're absolutely seeing it happen. It's yes. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Yes. Yeah, coming to fruition. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Bells have arrived. Yeah, the bells have arrived. Haven't been hung on the particular platform which will will now go up and be bolted into place. So the next slip will be the, uh, the bells. Mary, isn't it exciting seeing a culmination of uh, bells and Crane's going on oh, today. Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah, very exciting day and yeah, yes. pleased to see it happen. Yeah. Yes, and uh, such tremendous equipment to do the work, isn't it? Oh, amazing, yes. And they've built special platforms yes. and things. And, yeah, no, but it, it's it unbelievable. It brings you back to, the, there was great credit to be given to the people who originally designed the Carillion and built it without all these modern equipment. They That's must have had right. cranes, but not as sophisticated as uh, they are today. No, that's right. And um, it must have been amazing for those people back then and yeah. to watch it grow and yes. um, yeah, brick by brick. And, and the yeah. first recital. Oh, yes, incredible. And exciting. it's going to be great, say, July next year, the anticipated first recital. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, yes. amazing. Yeah, oh, yeah, so exciting. A lot of people are very excited, yes. I think, yes. And Mary, could you tell me what group you're involved with? Um, I'm with the Bathurst Historic Society. Right. Yes, and I'm also here on behalf of my husband, Andrew Fletcher. Oh, He's right. with the um, Carillion Committee, so. Oh, it's yes. great. Yeah. Great. Uh, so, um, we'll have a look now as the bells go up the yes, first lot. Yes, that's going to be very exciting. Thank you so much, Mary. Thanks, Bruce. Uh, what has been your role? Uh, Again. I've been involved with the upgrade of the Carillion for a long time. I was on a previous working party to have it all done and we didn't get it done that time so I've been working with the group this time right. to to develop it. My main interest is in the history of right. the whole thing so I'm, I'm just fascinated to see yes. what's happening today. Oh it's so uh, wonderful to see it coming to fruition. You have such a lot of planning to do, didn't you? Absolutely there was, and it, it's a lot to bring together. Um, but today it's just so exciting to see yes. what's happening. I'm like a two-year-old, actually. <laughs> and uh, the stage is now a progress. Once they've got that formwork up to work on and the, and the new set of bells, um, I think it was Richard said to me that they're hoping July might be the date of the first recital. 
I don't know when that night happened because we've still got to get another lot of bells. Yes, have you right? Absolutely, but I'm thinking we can certainly hear these bells. Yes. They'll sound the same as they do now, just a bit a bit clearer. Right. Um, but when we get the clavier next year, the whole thing will be a whole different yeah, um, it's fascinating. instrument. It'll yeah. Be It'll be a, a full Caribbean, won't it? Then it, it will be. And yeah. I'm I'm not mechanically minded, <laughs> but I have seen a clavier at Sydney University, oh, yeah. and I've heard the sound, and it is absolutely magnificent. Is it? Yeah. It is so different to what right. we hear here. Right. And what I find really exciting about the whole thing is the fact that the people back in 1933 and before, while they were putting the War Memorial together in the first place, they wanted to have a play here. They yeah. wanted the full instrument, but they were unable to get it at the yeah. time. So they did marvellously with what they had in funding. Uh, <laughs> We've got noise I'm, everywhere, but anyway. <laughs> I'm, I'm in awe of those people, yeah. what they did, how they, yeah. how they raised um, basically £10,000 in those days. I don't know what that translates to now. Yeah. Obviously millions. Yes. They raised that during some really yes. difficult times. I'm, I'm in awe of them. Yes. And I think it's just wonderful that we can finally finish their dream. Yes. And getting on another topic, but still related, history, arts, crafts and that, I was so pleased I came out to the Perthville Hall just uh, the last weekend and all those people together that you sort of didn't, you heard the names but I didn't know them and then got round to talking about them and saying this is going to be a tremendous group, I hope that continues. I'm sure it will continue because it's just wonderful, as you say, that was a great group of people all passionate about the heritage of Bathurst yes. in the area. And to get them all together is just really exciting. Yes. There's a lot of potential there. Yes, I think. oh, for sure. So there's much happening. Bathurst is certainly leading the field. And, and I think that was attributed to with the um, big festival art state, wasn't it? Uh, uh, three or weeks or so ago. Absolutely. fascinating footage I've got there I've still got to edit it but John and I yes. took quite a bit yeah. there no, so. that, that was wonderful and what was to me a real highlight of that and a, and a clue about the potential of our War Memorial Carillion is that beautiful piece of music that was yes. played with the, the Carillion and the, the cello and the yes. whatever else was there yes. uh, viola yes. <laughs> that, that little group, yes. it was just magnificent I'm just keeping my fingers crossed that turned out Monica Morse uh, was sending a message to me. Do you have that? I said I have. It. I've downloaded, but I just haven't had time to have a look. So yes. that would be great if it was recorded. And it, it would be wonderful if we can actually have that same performance. Yes. Once we get the whole oh, thing for finished, sure. for sure, it'll be magic. Yes, absolute magic. This, as you say, it's it's well known. It's iconic in Bathurst. Everybody recognises yes. that structure, that tower. What it was built for was to house the World War I um, War Memorial, which was oh, the Carillion, the actual instrument, yes. the bells, and having those played. So that was the actual World War I right. Memorial. Hence it's got the names of uh, the surrounding villages, right. all the areas that were impacted by the war. But since then, obviously, the, the tower oh. has um, become a memorial in itself. Yes and has done with World War II and, and subsequent yes. um, uh, engagements, engagements. Yes, engagements. And conflict, yes. Absolutely. So whilst we're upgrading the actual instrument from World War I, it's part of a much larger yes. memorial yes. that I think everybody should know about. Yes. Oh, there goes the drone again. Ah. And Jan, you've done such wonderful work in the past too. I can remember the bicentenary and the communication we had yes. in the particularly education field. That's right. And um, I thank you for your help. At that time, I got some wonderful footage there, which is certainly worth preserving historically. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for your interview today. Despite the noise, it's now it's always the rule of Murphy that uh, when you want to interview, there'll always be as much noise as possible in the background. When you have finished an interview, it'll become perfectly it's clear. <laughs> so what it'll do then? It's got these two big spotlights on it now. 
Right. So when you fly at night time, you've got this massive, big, bright circle of light. <laughs> oh, they, yes. they automatically turn off at about seven metres. So once you get about seven metres, they'll just turn off. You haven't had wow. any reports of UFOs coming down, have you? And you have used to, to. Have to have to explain. Yeah, yeah used to. A lot of people just write them off as, you know, probably a lot of drone sightings now are UFOs. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's, uh, that's oh, right. It's probably clever. turned around now. Yeah. Who knows which is which. So just recapping, um, Troy, this, you can see what it's taking, can you, on the Oh yeah, I've pillar. got a screen, yeah, so I've got like a, a dash, it's like a, yes. like your car dash, yeah. tells you how fast you're going and what have you, so yeah. it just tells me how high I am, yes. um, you know, it's got an automata, it's got a speedo, it tells me how fast it's going, it tells me how far away from me it is, yes. in, in horizontal distance, yes. it tells me what's going on, how high it is in, in vertical and distance. And it's got a mind of its own virtually, hasn't it, if well, you don't yeah, do the right thing. I mean, you can program it in, hit play, and walk away. And it'll, yes. it'll fly to waypoints, record, oh, right. take photos, come back and land by itself. Isn't that amazing? And um, about wind, uh, what level of wind can't you use it above? Okay, so it's rated for 15 knots. Right. right. So what's that in kilometres an hour? About 20? 20, yes, 24. 25, yeah. yeah 25 so that's now. quite a hefty wind that it yeah, can work yeah, with. Yeah, and I get wind warnings. How it works out the wind warnings. Is when it because it's it's GPS fixed. Yes. So when it's sitting there hovering and it's locked into into its GPS position. So if it was hovering there now and I went and grabbed this arm and tried to pull it away, it'd fly. It'd, it'd fight me to stay where yes. it is. And that's what it does with wind. So how it works out that it's windy is when it's when it's trying to sit there and hover and it's got wind pushing it that way. And these two props here are going to work harder to fight it back this way. Right. So. It's saying it's sending signals back saying that two of the motors are working harder to keep it GPS locked. Yes. So it, it, it classes that as wind, so it gives me a high wind warning. Yes. And have they developed, a, a, say, a human-sized drone yet that can be flown yeah. or? Uh, they have. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, they've got like a similar yeah. bike one now that you see if you're yes. around on, on the internet. And, right. Uh, <laughs> but they haven't. Uh, but going backwards, we seem to be. The humans, the actual humans we're developing now ain't quite as smart as this drone. Yes, <laughs> very true. Yeah. So. Uh, wonderful piece of equipment uh, and such wonderful pictures with the your choice of equipment. You're to be congratulated on not just using the toy stuff but investing in yeah. high quality yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like say, uh, you know, memories with a different angle. So. Yes. Yeah. And I mean, on that note, let's go and have a look at some of the drone vision now. Yes, yeah. Thank you, Troy. Wonderful work. No worries. Yeah, I'll just give you a moment there, you can cut. Bells have been lifted at long last. Quite a wait, but there's the uh, mounting cage and they're connected to the crane now. We're filming through the fence. But um, things are really happening now. Very good. So uh, here they go, sitting back. Must be some adjustment has to be made. It's a good job, job up there. Troy was saying with that uh, crane, used to hit the brickwork, it would demolish the work. So they have to be so careful. Andrew, I've been hearing a lot about the uh, development of the Carillion to a proper Carillion first of all, is that the case? Uh, yes, that is the case, yeah, yeah, I would say it was a previously a, as well, people to pronounce it as a Carillon actually, not a Carillion, oh, so it's a Carillon. Yes. Um, the Carillion is what it was essentially with the keyboard, single note, strength hitting the bell. Right. Now with it being, a, when it's going to be finished next year, it'll be a Carillon, so you can actually uh, play the bells with expression on the keys and all that sort of thing. They sound very, very different. Oh, right. Mm. Uh, just fascinating with, with the clavicle. I probably spelt it or sounded it wrong, uh, incorrectly, but how has that worked to play it? You know, is, does it require an uh, electric the, boost or anything? No, no, no. No, the, when the when the carillion will be done, I mean, the carillion is going in with the chime hammers, that is electrical, but the carillon, when that's done, it's all hand wires. Uh, oh, connections, right. direct to bells, linkages, um, so there's nothing electrical at all. Isn't in that there. fascinating? It's, uh, but it's played, an organist will play it well because it's foot pedals and yeah, hand yeah. clavier, back clavier, so yeah, it's all on timber. Yeah, that's fascinating. Now, your work with the foundry, is it, that yes. uh, cast the bells? Could you tell me a little bit 
about the foundry? Uh, the foundry was formed in 1859 in Loughborough, Goodness, uh, Taylor's Bell Foundry. Uh, it's a group of uh, Taylor brothers coming together from right. around the country of England. There was one in Devon, there was one in Oxford, and there was one in Huntingdonshire. And basically, they, were, they came from a former foundry. They were taught the skill 100 years previous to that. Um, but yeah, they built the foundry in Loughborough, central England, uh, picking right. the railway centre there and doing a set of bells for the local parish church. Oh, they built uh, basically the largest, what is still today, the largest bronze foundry in the world, just pure yes, for bronze, yes, oh, yeah, which happens marvelous. to be mainly bell metal. Yes, <laughs> and you've um, learnt the whole trade, you would have gone? I learnt the whole trade. I mean, I, I've been ringing bells from, since I was born, so oh, I, I learnt the trade uh, as soon as I could get out of school. I knew a lot of it before I went, uh, how bells are made and what it's all about. Yes. Yeah, and all the things to go with it so yes oh wonderful and uh, you've come out to see the installation done on the yes yeah the... I mean essentially I, there's a few of us that do the carillons around the world and uh, I'm one of those um, but I would also do hanging in our country I've just finished at St Paul's Cathedral in London but uh, overseeing the big project there I get to see the obviously deal with a lot of the bigger projects how make wonderful sure, make sure they're right yes <laughs> and um, how long are you in Bathurst for? I leave on the 5th. Right, so, so it's... Uh, so ne ne it's not like next lot of bells, I better hurry up. Yes, yeah, so they've got to... <laughs> but yeah, I mean, if I, I end up leaving before it's complete, there is yeah. another co-director of mine who's coming out. Yes. So we'll be able to finish it. Do you do the final tuning of the uh, bells? The, or the bells are tuned. Um, right. Yes, I could do little bits with them if needed, but I shouldn't have to do anything with them. Right, right. And it'll be a different sound, will it, to what we It's a stronger sound, yeah, yes, with the yes. little bells. I mean, the not for a start with the electromagnetic hammers, it won't be so obvious, but when the, yes. when the clavier's in and playing, you'll hear the difference big time. Now the, uh, I don't know the right term, but the striker of the bells, yeah. is it internal or outside it's the like These ones are external, and oh, the new right. ones will be internal. Right. So there'll be actually a clapper, it'll be a clapper known as a clapper inside, yes. hitting on the outside, they're known as hammers. Anything strike push oh, right. is known as a hammer on yes. the outside, a hammer yes. the bell. Yes, yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, that's fascinating. And do you think this one's a fairly challenging job to bring it up or uh, unusual? This is nice and easy with the crane doing the work, oh, right, for me, yeah. lifting all the heavy weighting. Yes. So, but then, no, the challenge will be next year. I'll be here for, I should think, six weeks next year, right. building the, uh, the clavier and all the rest of it for the next part so, of the next phase so of the project. When is it estimated it'll be finished? Um, well, this part of it I don't know, um, yeah. as soon as we can really, by the 5th if we can. Yes. We were talking about wanting it going for the 2nd, but I don't think that's on the card. But the um, clavier itself but is... The clavier and everything, that's next year, we don't oh, know yeah. when yes. entirely. No, we yes. haven't booked the date in the calendar. Yes. We haven't had the final money to say go ahead with it either, so... Right. So uh, give me... And are you heading straight back to England or have you got no, other jobs? I've got other jobs, yeah. All oh, right. I'm popping to Singapore on the way back. All oh, right. So they don't take their yes. bells out. So, yeah, oh. don't go back to England until the 12th. Ah, oh, wonderful. Yes. And it's so great to see you carrying on the tradition of oh, yes, bells. Oh, yeah, very much so. Yeah. Very skillful. Yes. And yeah. That is wonderful. Been and wonderful uh, meeting you, Andrew. Lovely. And I hope you can get a copy of this DVD <laughs> and... Yep. as we progressively film. No problem at all. Thank you very much. Max, uh, you've been around patiently waiting today. Um, do you have an interest in history? I do have an interest in history, yeah. Yes. Uh, what, have you found out anything interesting about the Caribbean being uh, here today? Well, yeah, Jan, Jan's done all the research on yes. it. Yes. Uh, I've sort of read each article she's, yes. she's done. That's great, isn't it? She's. Uh, been um, a great consultant uh, that I sort of met in the days of the uh, bicentenary. Um, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, what's been going on today uh, here? What are the what's holding things up at present? Um, I think they're still trying to get the, uh, the frame out, the old frame. Oh right. So they get the new one in. Yes. They've had to change the roof or take the old roof off. Yes. Put a frame in for a new roof. And then and they glass. can get the bells in. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it's a historical day, isn't it? Really, to get a it we is, find as yeah. filmmakers to yep. record it. And it's been lovely talking with you too, Max. Uh, thank you. Thank you for your comments. Thank you, Bruce. Brad. Brad, uh, you've been here for quite a while. What's going on? Well, it's the the uh, new bells going in and uh, old ones 
come out. And yeah. It's just it's a very uh, uh, historic occasion. It certainly really. is, it's, isn't uh, it? After all of this time, we're now going to get a, a full complement of bells and yes. uh, clavier. It's, it's, uh, uh, but just standing here witnessing it, it, it's just been so interesting and talking to different people and getting more detail about the, the, the nature of the bells, and yes. the sounds and how, how it will compare from the old to the new. And exactly. It's, uh, it's like it's, uh, the time has come yes. uh, to, uh, to do finalise yes. what started what, uh, all those years ago. And it's so wonderful, isn't it, that people at that time took on a, pro a huge project to build the uh, um, Carillion. I've never ceased to be impressed by the Carillion here. It, it's beautifully constructed, it's, it's huge, and, and it really is, um, ref reflects its purpose yes. Yes. in a way that uh, captures your imagination and helps you to understand the history yes. and the cellar and, and the times of remembrance here. yes exactly and, uh, now to update it it's like it, it's bringing it into the today's world exactly you know, you've said it. marrying the past with the present you've said it so well um, Max that, that is great and uh, I imagine you'd be looking forward like I am to when it's all finalized and we have a recital I can't wait. Yes, yes, it should be really great. <laughs> yeah. Yes. But what a joy it's been talking to different people yes, here yes, and, and hearing information and, yes. and, and observations and seeing the, the, the huge cranes and, the, yes. and how it's all come together. So it's uh, You've been a, a privilege re really added to be a here. different perspective. Yeah. Thank you so much. Glad yeah. to have met you. A pleasure. Thank you. The work going on within the tower, ready for the bell. The details for the in there. What you are seeing here yeah, has been filmed over a period of yeah, eight bell. hours, and it's oh, been yeah. edited back to about 50 minutes. This may seem rather easy, but it has taken myself as mm -hmm. editor good week's work, amounting to some 25 hours of editing researching and then making eventually into a YouTube feature. The Carillion and we're adjacent to is a wonderful park, very nicely kept by council. And we're all still awaiting that final stage of the new bells be attached and lifted in. Here's the next set of bells coming down. So two rows of old bells have been brought down. I'm hoping something goes up to replace them. Still dismantling the old bells. Quite amazing how the uh, crane driver can swig that uh, Dog box in or the other items in so gently and the correct way around because if they were to hit the bricks it wouldn't take much for it to topple the, uh, the brick lining. Very careful work and exacting work to be done. Underway. Let's have a look at the whole Caribbean picture. Here we are. The final bit. The dogman inside, ready to accept the rack of bells, the first new rack of bells going in. And we're there. That's all we can see. There's a lot more activity to be done inside to fasten them. Andrew is the, from the foundry is carefully watching 
the process that everything is handled properly. The crowd behind us of photographers and wallpapers and television station operators all are there to capture this event. This is a new roof uh, arriving, new roof to go up, so that's probably the last bit of uh, gear that is to go up today. That can be easily taken off and on so that work of the, uh, of the bells can be continued. So uh, to weatherproof it properly, this will go up today. Been a very, uh, quite a fascinating day. Not only learning about Carillion bells and claviers and, uh, from the people historical group, but also from one of the photographers who brought the drone over today to get some aerial shots. And he has some amazing gear which will revolutionise the type of work we can do. Richard, uh, do you think it's been a good day? Gone well? Things gone well? Absolutely, and I'm not sure how much longer they have to go. Yes. Uh, but at this time, it, it seems like it's going to be finished well within daylight hours. Yes, well which is before the winds come up, which are predicted. <laughs> Indeed, and a storm this afternoon. Yeah. So if we get that roof back on, I'll be Yes. Happy. Yeah, that was, that was fascinating for all of us that we were saying, uh, learning the technicalities of that, but also learning new equipment that Troy did Troy show you some of his gear oh, yes isn't yes. that amazing very impressive yes and the photographs that we can get in the pictorial record oh yes of this I wish we'd had this sort of thing available in 1930 yes when they were uh, building it and opening yes it. but um, at least we've got it now so yes. it'll be a, a record for the future Since the early 19th century, one feature of Leicestershire's industrial heritage has continued to resonate the world over. In 1839, John Taylor relocated his family business to Loughborough when he recast the bells of the town's All Saints Church. Over 170 years later, the company is now renowned as the world's largest working bell foundry. I've come to meet director Simon Adams to find out more about the scale of work involved here and the skill sets needed for such a unique craft. Simon. Hello, George. Hello, nice to see Hello. you. This is extraordinary, isn't it? I mean, there's clearly no doubt about what you do. As soon as you walk through the door, bells everywhere. Yes, there's actually hundreds of bells lying around here waiting for all sorts of work to be done to them. And by the looks of it, you're in the original premises. Yes, these buildings have been here since 1859. Can we have a, a bit of an explore? 
all shapes and sizes, clearly. Are these all new bells? No, these are bells made for restoration. There are some from the Wirral, some from the City of London. What's the biggest bell that you have actually made? The greatest bell that we ever cast was the bell for um, St Paul's Cathedral, Great Paul, that weighed more than 16 tonnes. And in terms of these bells here that are coming for restoration, I mean, what kind of ages are we talking about? These are dated from 1350. 1350. And they're inscribed in Latin. Beautiful. Uh, um, quite elderly, but they'll be restored for future use. So the process hasn't really changed? It hasn't changed at all. It's still the same process from 600 years ago. But more importantly, you've been able to keep those skills in being and keep training new generations of people to, to take them on. Indeed, and we've got now more apprentices than we've ever had. What is it that makes the perfect bell? Well, in a new bell, it's the shape and profile and the quality of the tuning that makes a perfect bell. The art of bell making incorporates very specialised tuning, and this company used their own five-tone principle that has remained unchanged for more than a century. <laughs> so this is the tuning room. This is indeed the tuning room. It has been since 1896. Presumably the acoustics in here are what make it work. They're perfectly designed to simulate a church bell tower. Now, are these old bells that you're retuning? Yes, they're in for restoration. They're 18th century bells. It's a very strange sort of, almost like a synthesizer sound at the end of it. Does that mean it's out of tune? There are some partials in there that aren't quite correct. And that's literally as the bell would have been sent, sent out by its bell founder originally. So how do you retune it then? We'll place the bell on a large vertical lathe and remove metal from the inside of the bell at, at particular positions to actually improve the sound of it. Now these bells look brand new, is that right? These are brand new bells going to Mosley in Birmingham. I can sound six of them if you like, so you can hear the difference. Well then give us a, a rendition. mounted in a tower, the sound that's going to echo across Mosley, it's going to sound amazing, isn't it? That would be an absolutely wonderful pair of bells for Mosley. Give us an idea of what a set of bells like this would cost. Uh, the full peel of town is in the region of about £140,000. Is it? Is it? But, you know, as you say, such a contribution to any community, and they will last potentially forever. I can't resist it. Can I have one more? Yep. Yep. There we go. A large number of the team here are also bell ringers, and when they're not hard at work, creating and restoring these magnificent bells, a well-earned break from the factory floor takes them up to the foundry tower. Ah, up in the gods. So, go on then, show us how it's done, and have a listen to the experts. So, I'll be going. Well, that surely is the sound of celebration that most of us would recognise. So let's hope it's in the air for Neil and for Jane. Across both Europe and Asia, bells and bell ringing have been part of the culture for more than a thousand years. In the United Kingdom, Taylor's Bell Foundry is the world's largest working bell foundry. The Taylor family got involved in bell making in 1784 and has been working from the current site since 1839. Bell metal, from which they are cast, is a type of bronze. The molten alloy is poured into a buried metal casing lined with a mixture of horse manure, straw and sand, moulded to the shape of the bell. It will take the freshly cast bell several days to cool. When a new bell is being poured, members of the public can view at a safe distance from the gallery. The raw bell is then clamped into the vertical lathe and the inner surface is machined. This tunes the bell, and the bell master will regularly check the process to ensure the final bell will deliver the correct harmonics. There is a bell museum at Taylor's Bell Foundry, but in reality, the whole place is a museum, 
with handwritten records covering 170 years of bell making. In 1881, the Great Cathedral of St Paul in London commissioned what would be the heaviest bell ever cast in Britain. Great Paul, as it's known, weighs 16 tonnes and can be still heard at the cathedral today.